the Grayling Ghost. This is a fly I tied up uh, last year for the first time. Um, it started off originally as a pattern that my really good friend uh, John Tobin tied up and used on the Clyde for quite a few years before I even met him. And he just simply called it the Pink Bug. Just a fluorescent caddy style pattern that was covered in uh, varnish. Uh, and he caught an awful lot of fish uh, on it. The, the Clyde guys even used it when they were uh, trotting with centre pins and uh, fixed spool reels etc. So here we go, this is the time for it. Uh, the hook in the vise is a Fasna. It's actually a clink hook. Uh, the number's 120. This is a size 14 with a 3mm counter get slotted uh, white bead. Um, I had these white beads lying in my box for quite a while and I just could not think of anything to tie with them. Um, but I think sometimes when you're fishing, uh, if, it, if it's not going too well, you just I think sometimes the fish just get a bit fed up of seeing copper and gold and silver beads. And I think sometimes it's just maybe, we'll never know, but I think sometimes they just look for something different. Uh, I was out with uh, Scott Hamilton one day last year and uh, it wasn't going very well at all and coming to the end of the day and I just put this on in one of the last pools we were coming to and I had three absolutely huge grayling within about half an hour I couldn't believe it and it's been in my box ever since so here we go so because the hook's kind of nickel black coloured uh, I like to cover it up because we're using a, fl a fluorescent pink body uh, so this is my favourite uni stretch. Um, great for covering lead. The hook, no build up, lies really flat. And by covering up the black hook, it means that the pink shows through even better. Very thin. Not really looking for any build up. Maybe just a slight taper coming towards the, the bead. And just tie that off and get rid of it. <laughs> I'll need to get a new way of doing these videos. Let's try to work around this camera as a nightmare. There we go. Say hello to Scott Bailey out in Australia. Here he's got a set of jaws from Verna this week and really likes them. They really are great jaws. Right. Next thing is a uh, Vivas body quill. It's a kind of fluo pink colour. This stuff's great for, and I use it in olive, brown, kind of yellowy. For all my dries, it gives a really nice shiny body and you can keep it very, very thin. Uh, it's got a cracking colour, cracking shine. It's just lovely stuff to work with. You can use it for rubs. Um, now just touching turns. Again, I like to keep everything nice and thin. Touching turns all the way down. And then come back up, fill in any gaps you've maybe missed. I'll just check that. A couple of you. It's, it's not vital. Right up. There we go. Nice thin. Nice thin body. Now what I do with that is this is the beauty of this stuff. You just want, need to watch because it's not very, it's not very strong and it does snap. So just give it a nice wee gentle whip. Now that in itself will not do. That will just get ripped to bits. So 
what I do is I give it a very thin coat of Solares Thin UV Varnish. Now when you're putting this on, because we have to do a wee bit of work up at the head, just put a tiniest wee drop. All you're really wanting this on for is to give a bit of shine, but it's really for protection. You're putting it on because you're not putting any kind of rub or wire to protect it. So that's really all you're putting this on for. Again, my always put it on with the brush. Don't use dubbing needles. Now what not to do is don't put it right up to the where the collar will be. Because it's when you um this stuff is so hard, shiny, it doesn't actually take thread very well if you coat it right up. So don't coat it right up to the where the bee does, leave a wee gap. Just one or two mil. Keep it very thin. I'm actually rubbing this off with my fingers just so that it's just covering it. As I say, it's just for protection. Give it a blast with a torch. Only needs a few seconds. This is the only UV resin that I've found that actually actually does dry properly. Lovely shine, rock hard, great stuff. Right, nearly there. You could actually fish it like that. Um, just a couple of wee finishing touches. Put my white nano silk on. This is my standard thread, 12 watt. Use that for nearly all my tying apart from small dries, which I use the 18. Great stuff. Now, I don't know what to call this, maybe it's maybe a wing, it's... You want very, very little of this. So can I mix between Antro and a wee bit of sparkle through it? It's probably my own mix to be fair. Very little of this. Now what I do is string it out then wrap it in and then fold it back and then what you're doing there is that's actually securing it in so that it'll not pull out and then just kind of rip that you can even give it a wee cut it's a bit too much just cut it at an angle Just a wee indication of a kind of wing or... And then just for the collar, very similar stuff. Antron, a wee bit of glitter. Flu fluo pink, just very similar to the actual Vivas. Um, dub it on, very sparse. I like the very sparse, with a good inch of the thread. You can see it there. And then what that does is, you don't get the build up, but you're getting the wraps of the nano thread, which you can't see. Touch of UV resin. Just use what was left over, you don't need a lot. Uh, what finish? Now, again, that. This is where again I keep saying about the nano silk, but just watch this when you you can you could literally turn that all day and it wouldn't build up, and then just hold the bead and really pull it in tight and it absolutely locks it locks the collar everything in very very tightly, and that caught me some lovely grayling last year. The Grailing Ghost.